Hey guys, it's Matt Asplund, and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. In today's video, what we're going to be going over is how to create a basic cinematic in Unreal Engine 5, where you can use it either in your game and in your levels, or you can export it to just upload and use as a video file. So as you can see on screen now, this is the basic cinematic that we're going to be going over and creating today. And if you do enjoy this and find it helpful, please do make sure to like and subscribe as it really does help the channel out. And we're trying to hit 100,000 subscribers soon. So please do subscribe and share the channel as well if you do find my stuff helpful and useful. Again, this is the cinematic that we're going to be creating. So without further ado, let me delete all this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to actually add in a new level sequence. So to do that, we can go up to the top here where we have this kind of cinematics icon and we'll add in a level sequence like so. You can place this wherever you want. I'm just going to put it in this folder and you can name it whatever you want as well. I'm just going to name it cinematic tutorial as that makes the most sense for me as that's what it's going to be doing. Just a tutorial for creating a cinematic. So I'll press enter to create that and you should see it will open straight away like so. What we want to do in here is if we press this little camera icon you can see this is going to create a new camera and set it as the current camera cut. So we're going to press this here to create a new camera and you can see we're now in this cinematic viewport with looking through our camera like this. And now we're also piloting this camera so if we move this about we're moving the actual camera itself which is very very nice it makes it a lot easier to see what it is we're doing is because we're actually moving that specific camera now in the bottom right here you can also change the different settings of this camera and these are essentially the same as actual camera settings so if you know what they are then this is going to be very easy for you to do so you can change all of these about here i'm just going to leave it as the default as i think that is the best for me i think this is going to be perfectly fine and then what we're going to do is just very simply i want to have this just moving through the world so on the left here you can see we have transform if we press this middle button here on the right, you see we can add a new key at the current time. If we press that, that has added a keyframe of this current transform, which is the location, rotation, and scale. So the current position and rotation the camera is in. If I hold control and scroll wheel, we can zoom out. And if I can drag this along to make this even longer, we can then move our timeline over to be somewhere else. And we can then move the camera to where we want it to be and go next. So let's say I want it to go down here if i press that add key again and then we go back you can see if we now play it we're going to be moving along like this and as easy as that to look beautiful and perfect like so now you might be wondering well what actually is this how long is this going to take well this is in frames on 30 frames a second so this is 189 frames or what we can do is off where it says 30 fps here we can click on that go show time as and then press seconds and you can see this is now 6.3 seconds long and we can continue doing this to create as many frames as we want. So let's move forward, or as many keyframes, I should say, sorry. So let's move the timeline forward, and then let's move the camera forward again. I want it to go under the bridge like this. Go down a little bit like this. You can kind of see under there, so I might fix that. But that's not part of the video. So I'll add another keyframe. I'll go back. You can see we're going to go here. And then we're going to start going under. Now we're going a little bit quicker here, because we're moving a shorter distance over a shorter time, as you can see by the distance between the keyframes here. If you want to speed it up, you can move it closer. So you can see that's now going faster. And if you want to slow it down, you can move it further away. So it's just going to take longer to complete that journey. However, I think I actually quite liked it where it was. So I'm going to leave it here. Actually, let's move it out here a little bit, maybe. So you can see this is kind of what it's going to look like. I'm happy with that. I kind of want it to speed up a little bit as we're going under here. And if I drag out and zoom out again, you can also drag the view range end time at the bottom right down here. Drag that across so we can view more. Drag the red line. So the red line is where the clip is going to end. And if we drag the camera out here, this is what the camera is actually going to be showing. So what we can see when we're viewing the cinematic. We're going to move forward a little bit more. And we're going to come all the way through once again. 
and go down here. Now, what I'm doing here is I've cut straight to where I want it to be. However, that's probably not going to follow the path I want it to because it's going to take the shortest path there. So what we can see is if I to play this, it's just going to kind of go straight through here like that, which isn't what I want because you're kind of clipping through stuff and it's not where I want. It's just taking the shortest path. So what we can do to fix that is go say at this point, I don't want the camera to be here. So I can put it in the timeline here, hold my right mouse button and move my camera again to where I actually want it to be at this point in time. Let's say here, even rotate it this way as well. And then add a new keyframe. And now we should see that it is going to look like that and go that way instead, which is a lot nicer. You can see it's still going this way. So at this point, I still want it to be down here like this. So let's add a new keyframe. And I find it easy to just do this because then I can actually see more easily where it is that the camera is going to be going and at what speeds. So I think that's good. And at this point, I want to just rotate it to look that way add a new keyframe and you can see that that is going to look a lot nicer once again and then this is now going too slow here compared to the speed we were at so i'm just going to move that closer to the other keyframes to keep the speed going up like so and then what i'm going to do is just go a little bit further out once again i'm now going to take the camera up a bit let's say something like this add a new keyframe we'll see what that looks like and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to add in a camera cut that is way too quick so let me just slow it down a bit and then I'm going to add in a camera cut to show you how that works as well. So that's still a bit fast, but I think it's going to be fine just for the purpose of the video. I'm going to keep angling it down like so. See, it's going to look something like this. So I think that is looking pretty good. And now I want to add in a different camera cut. So how can we do that? What we can do is go to where we want it to happen, and then we can add in a new camera like we did at the beginning. So pressing this camera icon and then let's add in a new transform for this camera. Well, that's actually set to where we want the camera to be. So I want it to let's be, let's say all the way over here. So I completely different. So let's say I want it to start down here, for example. So I've now got my camera down here. Actually, let's, yeah, no, let, let's, let's say here for the purpose of the video. I think this is fine. So we'll add in a transform here like so. And then we'll move it forward a bit to where we want it to then be on the next frame. Or oh, I need to move my time for lighting forward first, sorry, because you can see if you don't do that, it snaps back. So let's say I want this to kind of be going up while also still looking down a bit though, like so, because I want to kind of get a view of the whole map. So let's say something like that, maybe. I think that looks good. This might be a bit too quick, but I just want to get those keyframes in first of all. No, I think that's fine. So we get something like that. And you can see we now have this new track here. You can see as we've got two keyframes in, we now have under the camera actor, we have this kind of gray bar here. So if we go back up to the top and see camera cuts, and we need to press this camera icon to lock viewport to camera cuts, we can then see if this is working. So let's go back here to view what is happening. We can see we're moving following this camera, and then we should have cut to that camera, but you can see it actually hasn't. You can also see in the preview up here, it hasn't changed, and that's because we're still technically on this camera camera up here and the way we can actually make it change which camera it's using is we go back to where we want it to actually start using this new camera so i want it to be here this is where i want the, the change to happen and once you're there we can press this plus camera on the camera cuts and then choose the camera we want so for me it's cine camera actor 2 that i want to change to and you can see it is now going to cut to it you can see the preview has changed and if we to view it we're on this camera and then we're going to change and cut to this camera so you might not want it to happen specifically there because of the keyframes or what I can do is I might move that keyframe out a little bit and move this one forward a little bit just so that both cameras are actually moving still when I make the cut so it feels more fluid. It doesn't feel like one stopping. And there we go. I think that looks a little bit better. Obviously, it's not perfect, but I'm just making this very quickly to show you how you can do it. And then I think I might finish off this cinematic by just having the camera face the whole map. So what we need to do to actually move the camera again is make sure we select the new camera that we were using again so we can actually move it. So we're piloting it, move the timeline forward, and then we can now just do what we want. So let's say we just want it to turn around and look like that maybe. We'll add in a keyframe there like so. Is that going to be too quick or is that going to look good? I think that's maybe a little too quick. So I'll just take that out to here. Let's see what that looks like. Is that speed going to be good? I think that's going to be fine. And then what we can do is then I'll leave it like this to play for another couple of seconds and it ends at the red line there. So I think that is going to be pretty good. So that's 36 seconds long. 
But again, I think this is good. It's just a simple cinematic of moving the camera around. And we've also gone over two different cameras as well. So we can have different camera cuts. So let's go back to the beginning and make sure we view the camera cuts so we can view the current active camera. And let's hit play to see what's going to happen. So you can see we're starting up above this little pond and we're slowly going down and going to be following the river along under the bridge. You can see we're slowly starting to speed up here as we get towards the bridge. And then we're following us down, still speeding up as we go around this little bend here. And then as we get to this where the river is dropping down again, the camera is actually going up. And we're now going to hit our camera cut where this camera is now in the woods. It's going straight up where you can now view the coastline and the beach. And then it's turning around to view the rest of the map and also the little pond and river where we just came from and the little bridge over there. And then it's going to end a couple of seconds later. So I think that is absolutely great. That's perfectly fine. I really like how this looks for me. And what we could do is even add in another camera cut as well going down along this road if we want to. And in fact, I think I might just do that very quickly just because I want to have that in there as well. So let me just extend these over again. I'm going to add in another camera cut. Let me end that there. In fact, I might leave it for a second or two again. I'll add in another camera like so. And then I'll add in the camera cut immediately like this. So there we go. I've now finished creating my cinematic and I'm pretty happy with it. So now that I've done my final pieces, I've gone through it. I'm happy with how it looks. Let's actually go through both exporting it and playing it in game. So if you want to export this and use it somewhere else or have this then as a video that you play in game, what you can do is go up here and press the little clipboard icon to render this movie to a video or image frame sequence. You click that and then here you can choose all the settings you want. So I usually leave these pretty much default. So video sequence AVI, no audio, and then the resolution I like to change to 3840 by 2160, 16 by nine as it's 4K, it's the size scale of my monitor. And then the output directory, you can also change to wherever you want as well, or you can leave it in the saved of the project. I'm gonna leave it in saved, and then you can press capture movie. Everything else you can leave as default. However, if you want audio, you can obviously choose the audio that you're using. So for example, master audio submix would be the default. But once you're happy with that, you can press capture movie. Now what this is gonna do is prompt you to save. You can save all of that, and then it should open up a little window where it's gonna start going through frame by frame. And you can see this now in the top left, it's going through frame by frame and you can see it's capturing video as well. It might take a second to load everything. I'm not gonna capture this right now because it's gonna to take too long to do. I'm gonna do that after I finish recording. But once you have done that, it will then just be a video file in the folder that you've output it to. However, what do you do if you want to play this in game? Well, we can close this and then let's go to where we want to start it. So let's say for example, you want to start it based on a box collision that the player walks into. So what we can do, quickly add to the project and search for trigger and we want a trigger box and we're gonna just place this where we want in the level. So I'm just gonna put it on this bridge here. I'll make this a little bit bigger as well. Let's just say five, I'll make this a bit bigger like so. This doesn't have to be perfect again because I'm just doing this quickly. So we'll do something like that and then we can open up our level blueprint by we go up to the top here and it's the button in the middle between of add and cinematics and we'll open level blueprint like so and then once we're in here we can delete these two nodes here minimize this tab slightly and then we're going to want to select our cinematic in the level so we can just search for it in the world outline if you don't know where it is and i named mine cinematic tutorial you can see it there and we're just going to drag and drop this into our level blueprint like so then what we can do is drag out of this and we can just search for play and we want the play out of sequence player and this is all you need to do to play the cinematic and you can do this wherever it is that you want to trigger it so whether this be in a trigger box or when you complete something or when the player picks something up or after a certain amount of time for example if you're on a timer whatever it is you just play these three nodes here but for a trigger box what we can do is select the trigger box in our level and in our level blueprint right click and just search begin overlap add on actor begin overlap put that into play there and now we can see perfectly that we are going to be able to play our cinematic compile save this and then i will close it and let's play the game from here so i'll right click play from here and then we can see that when i walk into this box trigger it's going to start playing the cinematic now you can obviously see my player still moving about here on the bridge which is pretty cool 
and if you don't want that you can obviously just you know disable the movement but you can see that it's now playing this cinematic perfectly Let's see if i can jump down in front i can't so, but you can see this is the cinematic we created and it is playing it perfectly and so with that i think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we've wanted to do what we've done is we've gone over and created a cinematic in our in our game ready to play in the level or to export whatever it is that you want to do but we've created a basic cinematic in unreal engine 5 where we can make it move and we can add in camera cuts and you can do anything else that you want with the camera as well essentially any options that you saw in the timeline that we had open you can modify using the keyframes that i was showing you and talking to you about as well and you can see once it's finished we just get put back into the game here like so so thank you so much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you found it helpful and if you did please do make sure to like and subscribe down below as it really does help me and our channel out a lot we're trying to hit 100,000 subscribers, so please do subscribe and share the channel. Once again, it really does help me. So thanks so much for watching this video, and I'll see you all in the next one.